First there's the wonderment, then there's the, the idea, I'm going to do something with all of this, and then there's the talent to actually do it. He had a car, I think he said it was a Chrysler or something, and he rigged it up with a tape deck in the early days, and would cruise off across the southwest listening to, uh, probably had stacks of cassettes of every kind of thing, like Tampa Red and, and rock and roll and rockabilly, and I don't know what all. So this was something that he was putting together in his mind, you see. He, he must have seen it all as a, as a puzzle. You have the right car, then you need the right music, and then you go to the, down the right street, and you get a whole picture. You see what this place is all about. So it's a journey in, in, in this guy's mind, and, and the story develops from that, and that's what needs accompaniment and especially because he doesn't talk. So you figure, well, if he doesn't talk, does he hear anything? And if he were to convert that into sound or melody, this is what it is. You take the little theme, and each time it's a little more, or it's a little different, and, it, and, and the slightest little nuance is gonna push it this way or that way. And Harry Dean's all on his face. He's not using his voice for the first half, so you don't have that to consider. The audience has to somehow go with his pace and, and, and other things other than direct information like speaking. I was sitting around the table with, with my wife Susie and, and Jim Dickinson, the keyboard player, and we were doing something. I forget why he was out here from Memphis and they said, well, I wonder what Vim's doing. You know, I bet he's doing something interesting. 20 minutes later, the phone rang. I hadn't heard from this guy in years. And I hear this whoosh on a telephone, long distance telephone. Uh, hello, this is Vim. That's sentence number one. I say, hey, Vim, we're just talking about you. What are you doing? Well, uh, I've uh, I made a film. That's sentence number two. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And he says, um, yeah, I'd like you to do the music. It's great. If you look at those books that he did of still photography, which he must have, uh, takes a million pictures wherever he goes. So while he was doing this film, I think he was out there taking pictures, and it looks, I have those books, and I've looked at them, and it looks to me like it's an assemblage kind of thing. It's like the green door, and there's the red stripe, and then there's this cloud over here, and um, it's there for as tools or, or, or fluid elements for him, you know. So he's seen a million skies on, in pictures. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, you know. It's just a sky. It's clouds. So what? But he's got the notion of how you focus that for people. You focus it with this poor man standing on the railroad tracks. Then the sky has meaning. 